Hello Lola's, this is really a quick video, really, really quick video. Guys, make sure you subscribe, <laughs> give me a thumbs up. Check the, the description bar for all the links, click on that, figure out everything. I am just making this very quick, very, very quick. Um, this is just a really quick, quick, what do I do, what do I expect when I'm expecting a brand new silicone baby for the first time. First of all, first of all guys, make sure that you read your care instructions from the artist. Um, make sure that you refer any really, really important questions. I don't say bombard the artist with a whole bunch of questions, but if you definitely think it may affect the quality of your doll or damage your doll, definitely refer back to your artist. Um, it's okay to get advice from some experienced collectors. However, keep in mind that collectors that do not um, deal with this medium or you know make these dolls may or may not know, you know true factual information. Um, and also keep in mind that everybody don't have your best interests in mind. So you don't want to just start doing all these different things. Um, number one, only use silicone pacifiers in your baby's mouth. Do not use latex. Latex and silicone do not mix. It causes the silicone not to cure properly. And I know people will say, oh, you can use it after it's already cured and matted and all that stuff. But if your doll should have a problem down the line and you need a touch up or something like that, um, it may cause a, a, a situation where, depending on how it's cleaned and all this stuff, it may just not, you know, take, you know, I don't know. But I just don't do it. I say that's my number one. Um, I'm just telling you my experience and my opinions on things that I do with my babies. Um, although people in the past said Johnson & Johnson is okay to use, if you're going to use Johnson & Johnson baby bath i would only use one literally one drop in there just to give it that baby smell a look if you want to however i do not use that in my bath water for my babies i only use straight water when i give my babies a bath i put the bath the johnson and johnson on the side for um props and i may um but i do not use it i use straight water to rinse my babies off um, I usually use lukewarm, you know, something like room temperature water. Um, some artists says use cold water, some says hot. I don't know. I forget. So I, I just use lukewarm. Um, I don't bathe my babies excessively. However, I do love to bathe silicone babies. I think that it is such a fun experience. So definitely, I definitely don't see anything wrong with it. But I just maybe do it like, you know, every so many months. Um, sometime only once a year, um, you know, at best, maybe twice a year being that, you know, I do consider myself somewhat of a YouTube entertainer. So I do do bathing videos. So I'll do like maybe one. Um, if you are a YouTube creator, save your bathing videos. If you're doing a day in a life, you can always take that one clip and insert it into your day in a life so that you don't have to keep bathing your baby over and over and over again. It appears that you're giving them another bath, but it's the same bath. So I have done that before several times where it looks like I'm giving them a new bath, but that is the bath video clip from another scene or setting. Um, so you can do that. Um, also here, um, I use a very gentle, soft baby brush, or now I'm using this new goat hair brush is not that new but it's kind of new to us in the community um and i i use that mostly this is good for babies with sparse hair but i find that it works with all my babies especially the little edges the baby edges um toothbrushes i use them a little bit you know for the edges but not as much as i used to i found that you have to be very careful with toothbrushes as well because you know some toothbrushes are like brillo pads too so you want to Make sure that those bristles aren't too hard either and snatching your baby edges out. So, um, like, baby Noah has absolutely no product in his hair right now. He has just strictly water where, you know, I mean, spritz water in his head. Um, but in person, it does still have a little bit of a sheen. It's just called using quality mohair and it's uh, micro-rooted and rooted very deep. Um, so, he doesn't shed hair like you know people say silicone babies shed hair i had a baby um i've seen some of claire seller dolls uh five years later and they still have all their hair so you can even though silicone is not sealed inside 
if you are take care of it, it will will last. Um, um, if you're doing a custom, I would suggest that you do not get that thin look in the back. It looks cute, but to me, I just feel like um, it's better when you get it rooted thicker. I don't know. That's just my opinion. Um, other than that, um, powdering your babies, cornstarch only. Um, when you do it a lot, it actually like dulls the color of your babies down. So I wouldn't, you know, be obsessive with it. And honestly, if your baby don't need powder, I would not use powder on your baby. Um, I've had silicone in the past. I felt like the powder was kind of creating shine spots versus not. Um, so if you don't need it, don't use it. It used to be a sensation. Um, if you want your babies to smell good and smell baby, um, there's other ways you can do that. Uh, you can, if you really, really insist on it, you can use some, um, Dawn. Is it Dawn? Downy. Downy. <laughs> Downy fabric softener a little bit and water and spritz their hair and that smell will give them, you know, if you get one that smells the baby scent, it smells really good in their hair and it gives them a fresh smell when people pick them up. Um, because if I use anything, that's the only thing I will use is a little bit of fabric softener and water in my baby's hair. And definitely with reborns, any babies, if your baby have really tangly hair, fabric softener and water works like amazing. Um, so, um, but other than that, just water. But you can get like the baby spray, the baby powder spray and spritz their clothes in the closets and just make sure it's good and dry and let it dry and everything and do it on the outside, of course. And then, you know, you put it when you put it on your baby, your baby smells baby. Um, so I would do that versus, you know, trying to wash them with baby scents and all that stuff. Um, another thing is um, dressing your babies. Try to prevent from doing a lot of rubbing, a lot of friction on your babies. Um, so you don't have rubs and you don't have um, worry about matting and painting and all that. You know, all, every baby is different. Some babies that, you know, not cured properly or painted properly, the paint may just rub off, you know, with the slightest touch. Um, the matting may leave. And a lot of artists that don't know exactly what they're doing yet, they will give you all these excuses like silicone is imperfect. You're not, they're not made for dressing. Um, the matting will come off if you keep changing your baby and all this great jazz. But then when you look at some of the legends in the community, and I'm not talking about seniority because in art, there's not a such thing as seniority. It's about experience. It's about results. You know, you have people that's been here since the beginning who started, started it and they're still at the beginning and they still at the start line. Um, they haven't evolved. They haven't progressed. And so therefore... It doesn't matter how long they've been here, but what have they done over time? How much have they evolved? How much they changed? So, you know, all that is thrown out the window. I'm talking about the people who dolls have been around for years and years, went through collector after collector hands and not the, the, the collector mills. I'm talking about the ones where they take them and they remold them and do all types of crap and break armatures and take off matting and snatch hairs out and change eyes. I'm talking about collectors that, normal collectors, normal wear and tear type collectors that just interact with their, their babies normally, or whatever we want to call normal, um, average, on an average amount of time. Um, those artists work last and the paint don't come off and the matting lasts and the hair stays in. And therefore, I look at that as a standard and I say, you know, if it's possible for one, it's possible for all if done properly and taken care of properly. It's not just on the artist, it's also on us too, guys. We have to take accountability for our actions as well. So don't be obsessive. Um, I know we like to dress our babies and all that and stuff, but I personally slowed that down after maybe the first two years of collecting. I realized, you know, rotate your babies sometime, you know, or... It, you can take your babies in different poses without changing their clothes every single day, four and five times, you know, three times a day. You know, if, if when you first get them initially, you're going to do a lot of changing. Usually most people are. Um, that's fine. But you don't want to keep that up because, you know, they are pieces of art. Um, but so anyway, so that's the dressing part. I just say, you know, dress moderately 
and you know dress them as you you want of course enjoy your baby how you feel if you if you're not going to be dying and crying if you know the baby get a rub mark on it or a shine spot down the road then who cares dress them three times a day if you want you know it's your baby pacifiers don't leave pacifiers in your baby's mouth especially if the mouth is like closed because you're going to slowly start seeing where it just leaves gaps 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 because it's stretching it if you leave it in there like overnight days you know just sitting in the mouth i usually pop my baby pacifiers out right after a video right after a photo shoot um but with babies that have open mouths noah have a pretty open mouth so if i leave his pacifier in his mouth really you're not gonna it's not gonna do anything because he kind of pretty much have an open mouth a lot of claritella kits does have open mouths and that's great because we don't really have to stress about the pacifiers other thing is don't get big nipples on your pacifiers. Um, try to get newborn size. Some of them will say they're bigger size, but if you look at the nipple, if it's flat or small, that's fine. Um, then mostly it's about the size that's going to cover up your baby face. That makes it a six-month pacifier. Um, not so much of the nipple, but some of them have very wide nipples and you don't want to do that. Um, also, you know lubricate it with ky or either you know powder before you put the slide the slide in the mouth wet it with water or something so the friction not rubbing against the lip and rubbing off the the, the lip gloss <laughs> as uh, gabby used to call it a lip gloss the shine or whatever or just the painting period on the lips um if you have to squeeze the cheeks you know if you baby have a little bit of smaller mouth or something you know you can gently squeeze and then insert the uh pacifier but i find that you know like the ky or the powder just makes it easy and without having to do that um a lot of people like to look in the mouth for tongues and tonsils and all that stuff be careful not to be stretching the baby mouth all open like this and pulling and pulling because then you end up with splits on the side of the mouth tears you don't want to do that so that's another thing um you know just handle your baby accordingly don't lay them on sharp objects um you know, um, clothes, jeans. I don't normally put my reborns or my silicone babies on jeans, blue jeans, dark color clothing. You rarely will ever see my babies in dark color clothing. Um, but if you do, um, usually tights are, are fine. Um, I have heard that silicone will not, the, the, the dye will not bleed onto the silicone because nothing sticks to silicone but silicone. Um, Noah did wear his jeans for a little bit, not the whole entire day. And he was fine without tights. I normally put him on tights if I put him on some. So if you want to, you know, proceed on the air of caution, then use tights. Some white tights will be fine or either some thin leggings or baby pajamas that's, you know, really thin. Then that's, you know, that's what I would do before wearing jeans and dark colors. Um, What else? Tight clothing. Don't force your baby into clothing if, you know... You know, for us, you know, you wear really tight clothing. If you're a woman, you get a yeast infection. For your babies, you wear, put tight clothing on the babies and stuff like that. The baby is likely you to get a rub or might tear or something or whatever. Don't force it, especially with shirts and pulling the arms. You want to just be careful. You want to make sure you pull on the clothes and not on the babies. I particularly, I know the hand mitt thing is trick is popular. People be putting plastic bags. God knows I've, I've seen that. I And then... Don't be offended if I say this, but I'd be like, what the heck the heck? You just killed all the realism right there for me. Like the plastic bag thing. I can't take it. I'm not doing that crap. I'm not putting no plastic bag on my baby, period. Period. Okay. But the hand mitts thing, you know, a lot of people use that, but I, don't, I find that a little bit tricky because yeah, it helps, you know, you go through, but you know, you're pulling, you're not seeing what you're pulling. So I find that if I gather all their fingers together and then pull their hand through the shirt, the shirt over, you know, down their hand or whatever, but holding their fingers together, making sure I got all five, you know, all four fingers and a thumb, if that makes sense. Um, it works better for me because I can actually feel the fingers, see what I'm doing, not accidentally still pulling a finger off in the mitt. Pull off the mitt and you got four fingers and one left in the mitt. I just, you know... But to each his own, do what works for you and what you feel most comfortable with. Um, shoes. Don't force shoes on your baby feet. Um, make sure you look at the inside of the shoe too if you're putting the baby on straight shoes and no socks. Um, I always try to buy shoes 
and pants and clothing that have a white lining. Um, if I can't get a white lining, I'm really not usually going to buy it. And if it's a shoe and it doesn't have a white lining, the baby will always have on socks with that shoe. Um, I'm not a shoe person, but I do have shoes for my babies. But I do say buy the shoe with the little room where it can easily slide on, especially with silicone. Even with your reworns, all that rubbing, you know, against the paint, not good. Um, what else? What else? What else did I cover? Um, diapers, changing diapers. I don't see the need that you have to change a diaper every single time that you change your baby. However, if you feel inclined to, it is great. I do it quite often, mostly when they get crink cr crinkly, and I gotta go because my battery is dying. So anyway, guys, if you want to hear more about things that you should do and things that you shouldn't do, um, let me know in the comment section. I hope that I kind of covered mostly everything. Love you guys. Talk to you later. Peace, and we're out. Bye.